entitlement and we'll be doing a entitled name port okay so what is an entitlement right so what we discuss entitlement is nothing but it is a responsibility or you can call it as a normal it's access given to an employee to perform certain task so in the real time if we talk right now uh, like in an organization we used to have different different access so let's say if we join a company like uh, as a software engineer right we'll be getting a entitlement access for that and if somebody else is acting as a manager they will have a another entitlement right so basically what cvint is doing right cvint is managing the entitlement so always remember cvints never create any this uh, entitlement what does it mean we are not going to create any entitlement in cvint because CV entitlement will be defined from your application side so if this is your application right what happened okay if this is your application right in your application let's say you have different different department so you have a department let's call that as a hr department right and you have another department uh, or different project let's say you have a project name called xerox right that will have a different department right so in this department whatever role you have like if you have a hr position called floor hr you have a another position called people hr right so these floor hr and people hr this is called as a entitlement and what is their entitlement type or groups it is called as a hr okay so in savient we will be calling this hr as a entitlement type and under that whatever we have entitlement or responsibility that will be called as a entitlement so we have to bring like you know in database application we cannot bring the entitlement type because you know uh, that is like we have to create in manually we can create in savient we'll see right and we'll bring this entitlement like hr pro hr and people hr under this entitlement type so what is the purpose of being that see if i have a user here abc and this abc user came from your hrm source right so while this hrm source this user arrive here through this hrm source in abc uh, sorry in savient this abc user if i want to provision to this target application right i will create the account but once the account got created that means he got access to this application right so this abc user once the account got created here he got access to this application but what action he should perform in this application what role he should play that will be decided by the entitlement so while raising the request for this application here right in request access for other we saw in ars we have to choose the entitlement what entitlement you want to assign to the user so that that entitlement will get assigned to this user okay so we will first see how we are going to bring back the entitlement here right once this entitlement is bring back to the user we will try to provision this entitlement to the user as well so uh, 
let's go ahead and uh, try to um, create some entitlement. So here in our database table, right, we have account entitlement import, right? We'll create an entitlement import table. So create a table. I'll give the name as E N T I T L E M N T import. So once I keep the name, right? Let me go through the document as well. Right? Where we are gonna place this thing. So if you go back to our connection, right? Here our create account JSON was there, right? So this is your grant access JSON. So this is for you know provisioning this user to the entitlement. So we'll have a import also for entitlement. So you see this entitlement value import. Okay. So basically copy this come back to here and type entitlement import configuring access import so how we are gonna bring the entitlement from the target system so you have to prepare a xml content okay so to perform a full import access right we have to follow this thing this fully not displaying okay so, okay, so let me copy this one, right? And in the notepad plus plus, go back to our JSON, right? We copy anytime this one. Paste it here. These are the value, right? I think it is the same one, right? Yeah. So this should be. I think it's a different Excel format. It should be, let me paste it here. Entitlement. Import. I type it here. It's stealing from account import. Okay, I think I open in outside. Okay, let me open it again. Fresh desk, heavy and fresh desk.
and then undo the color and uh, okay, let's copy this one and we'll see if anything is missing we'll add it here this we need an ending tag of this data mapping and this mapper also should be there and mapper of them and just give a backspace here okay and here Okay, so let's change the value according to our table, right? So give a backspace. And what is column they're passing here? They're passing here like, you know, application name, that is the security system name, right? Where we want to, uh, you know, bring back the entitlement that is like our security system only we have to mention here. And endpoint we have to mention. What is the entitlement type we have, right? That also we need to mention and entitlement value right what is the entitlement we are typing and the entitlement id the glossary that is again it's a display name of the entitlement and a description and owner we can you know skip this owner value it is not required so let's keep this column and if i come back to my security system Right, just refresh the URL now and click on the security system. Open our database connection. Database connection CF. Go to the endpoint and open the endpoint. And the entire type, we do not have anything, right? So simple because this is database type, we are not bringing the we don't have an actual right, you know, relationship table. That's why. So create a normal em uh, employee type, entitlement type, right? I'll give the entitlement type name, right? What name we discuss here? One is HR, right? So simple create HR employee type, right? And give the same name here. And simple click on create. Okay. Now just go back and click on then you see this HR entitlement type right so i'll be creating another entitlement type let's create i will give manager okay so two entitlement type and uh, i'm creating under this endpoint name so we have two entitlement type one is hr one is manager and let's uh, create this you know table so we need one column name that is application name so as usual it will create a by default column right for us so we'll be leaving like that so entire menu input if we just click it entire id leave it like that and give the application name and give this to 55 character after that let's create this column name and point name and then this is also a 55 character we have entitlement type we just create it right leave it like that 45 character only because we have less character there and then value and we have entitlement id okay 
I think it didn't copy it. Let's make copy it. Entitlement ID. And after that, we have glossary. So glossary, again, it will be the you know, same name. We have to just pass it as entitlement. And description. Copy the description. Description is not required, but you can still give the description name. I'll give some more character to it. And after that, nothing else. So simple, click on apply and apply. So the table is created. Entitlement impose. Just refresh it. So leave this because this is your primary key or it will be auto increment. So what is our application name? Copy the application name. So application name and endpoint name both are same for us, right? And entitlement type, I believe we have given one is HR, okay. An entitlement value. Uh, let's say we give this as name as floor HR and entitlement ID. It's like you know, I'll give some random ID 7896. Sorry, uh, your voice is breaking. Can you come again, please? Hello. Why endpoint will be there in target application? Is it the same case with all the target application? Yes. So for all the target application, we need an endpoint, right? Where your endpoint will be containing your actual data. That is your account, all the entitlement, it will containing your endpoint. And this endpoint, it is, you know, staying under your security system because your security system only giving the connection information. So if you open your, this is your security system, right? Database string safe, and this is your endpoint. This endpoint, right? We are keeping under the security system only. And security system, if you look back, it is containing your actual connection, database training CF, okay? And this connection, right? It is already present we have here. So every and each and every application will have an endpoint Right, that endpoint will be attached to your security system, and security system will have an attachment to your connection. So this is a, there is a two connection, right? This connection we required for you know, like a account import. If you want to bring back the account information to your, like you know, um, this save end, and this provisioning connection we require to send the data or like to create the account in your target application, and to bring the HRMS information right to your target application, sorry, to your save end from HRMS to save end, or this is like your trusted database, right? Trusted source. We do not require any endpoint or any security system there because this security system or this your endpoint, it is specific to your target application, not to any trusted, okay? Always remember we talk about like, you know, Two things. One is your trusted source of information. And another is your target application or target data. Yes. So this is your target database. And always trusted source will be your one source of information to where your user are getting onboarded to your saving system. Right. So this HRMS system, it is your trusted source. And to bring back the user to save and right, we are not mentioning any security system. It is not required at all, actually. So sometimes the question will come you know, in the interview. What all thing you need to bring a user to your save and, Right? Or you can they'll ask how you perform a trusted source of reconciliation. So simple, you can tell like we need to create a connection. Right? In the connection part, we have to mention your URL, your username, like your, this, these are username, password, nothing but we call it as a credential. So you have to pass the URL information and credential, right? And the driver name. And we have to mention your user import. And while they will ask you again a question, when you are doing a user import, 
what is the unique value you are passing why it is required so this unique value right you are passing the username based in this username only it will try to create a user in your save end because this is your unique attribute and these are they will be passing telling like what else information i can pass suppose i do not want to pass uh sorry i do not want to create you know pass the system username or email it should auto generate the email so you can mention we have to make this generate email as true okay so that it will automatically create it so we'll come to the next thing like you know how you can create an email id so you know after the entire time point i'll show you how we are gonna perform this thing even this zero day provisioning also right we'll talk about this okay this is not still yet discussed we are just you know integrating our first application so once that is over right i will come to this part you know one by one okay so this is like we talk about like you know uh we have our database created sorry our application name endpoint name and entitlement type entitlement value flow richer we give and entitlement id we give so glossary we can again pass the same name what is the entitlement value okay so these are the same name it's a different so description uh, sorry to pause you manoj mm -hmm. so i understand this table but why it will it be there on target as we are creating in our custom db mm -hmm. come again please why will it be there on target as we are creating in a custom db database okay so this is just you know to simulate an application right because in the real time if you want to integrate a real application right you should have an access to application right so i showed you this database also right for a custom db you can integrate it and it has a purpose because in the real time also this is nothing but a like you know sap for sap connection save into save in connection also it will be there what does it mean sometime you required you know to create directly some information in your user table in the save in right you will in the real time you should have some task to create some directly record in the user table so that time how you will perform that okay and in the real time also you will have a database integration will be there so some company they might have legacy application or legacy database so you know if you talk like we are now integrating this hr database as a database but if you join any company where you are you know working as a savient engineer you will have to integrate a number of application that is you know that is why they are hiring you so might be it is a ad or a database application or like it is a rest based application right this rest based application it will come to picture right so many more application is there so i have seen some of the database application that i have already integrated with the name is p3ms ostris is a different database if you search it ostris right so our savient to savient okay savient to savient you also required to integrate this data why if you want to perform some action on your own database right it will allow you to create a connection so that is also there and talking about like rest based application you have adobe application you can integrate you have your uh, nobility application you have your github application you have your uh, what else like uh, workforce meta right and your service now so we'll look into service now as well okay in the upcoming class i will give you solution because i have created a dummy application and active directory i can show you so your question is like why we are integrating database application right so database application we required we integrating it so as i showed you right so the database integration we implemented in a two different way so that is why i think you are confusing we integrated first as a trusted source trusted resource or trusted source or user import right where 
all this user, whatever we had, we are bringing back to Savient, right? So this is it, one part, okay? If you don't consider this part, second part, what we are trying to achieve, we have number of user in Savient, number of user we have Savient, and those user we are trying to provision to our target application. So here our target is database, right? If you talk about like integrating a real-time application, so that real-time application, you, have a, you will have a cost factor and you cannot get a real-time application, right? Until unless you purchase it, okay? And that purchasing means if you, right? Let's say Azure AD you have, right? If you want to integrate it first, right? That means this Azure AD will have a license cost that license cost will be in lakhs, right? Like, you know, 20 lakhs or 30 lakhs, they'll be charging if you want to use their application just for your, you know, company purpose. Or this is for authentication purpose, you are using Azure Ready. And if you are using this Azure Ready, you will have your, you know, users here, right? Who are Im implementing or using this application. And if you want to integrate with our save end, right? Why this integration is required? We talk about the life cycle, right? We want to manage this Azure AD so that nothing would happen in here manual. Once all the user, all this legacy user, we bring back to our save end through a target reconciliation. Or we call it as a non-authoritative source. To the non-authoritative resource, we bring back this information to your savient. Once the users are here, we are managing this application, right? And if you wanted to manage this application, you should purchase this application first. And you cannot directly go ahead and purchase this, right? Any application. You should have a company license and corporate accounts should, you should have, right? So there is a norms for the company. So company always, you know, they purchase applications for a region, right? If you, until unless you don't have any requirement, they don't that. And we, as we do not have any, you know, license application, first we are using this database, okay? So database, I know you have a little bit confusion, but once we come back to your Active Directory, all your doubt will get clear, okay? So Active Directory in the next class, because I'll be showing you, next to next how you are going to manage a active directory application in the real time so that application will have a real time view how they are integrating active directory and why active directory not database there is a difference right why people mostly prefer going to active directory instead of database so that information we'll see okay so that was your question right why we are using database right Yes, yeah. So this is just for you know our demo class purpose. I'll show you, but in real time, also they will ask you to integrate a database application. So let me tell you what is what is the exact requirement you will receive. Okay, so you joined a company, let's say. Okay, I'm giving you a real life example. Suppose you joined Accenture. Okay, once you join under it you are assigned to a project called ZFS. Okay, this ZFS project, they have the real, I'm telling you, okay? This ZFS project, they are using Savient, okay? And here, they already have integrated your user report. That is, they are using here SAP. This SAP, all the user, whatever they have, like, you know, 20K or 30K user, these are already brought back, you know, to save it. And newly also user are getting added, right? One, two, three user, user. Those users user also coming to save in through a user import. And this system is already there. And this save in is integrated to many more applications already. Let's say Active Directory is already integrated, your LDAP is integrated, your uh, like, you know, some of the REST-based application is also integrated, you have Gmail also integrated. Now, 
when you join the company they will give a task boss we have a target application the target application name is like in you know, ostrich and it is a database application so you have to integrate this application okay so when they told you to integrate application what you have to do first you have to you know go to the business analyst this business analyst and you have to connect with the ostrich team they will tell you what is their requirement so you will be asking what is your total user base let's say they told we have 20k user total and what action we required right we required the action whatever user you, we have let's say 20k user this user first you know you should be onboarded to savient right they should come to savient and you should involve the operation whenever any user information is getting changed that should capture right savient so savient should send the update okay now savient will update the user and some new user who are onboarding that also it will get created in savient okay so create user also will happen and revoke user also happen if the somebody is leaving the organization so they should also remove from the organization so these are some of the operation you should perform so one thing you can remember here just imagine if cvind is not there okay and this is all your target application and this ostrich also it is a target application how the user are getting created here it is manually right but when they are getting created that is the most important question once your user like through accenture somebody join like and they are onboarded to your this sap system right the user got created here let's say this user name is abc he got created in sabient or hr uploaded this user in the same time hr will also should contact right this application team right and this application team to create their account here so this ostrich team would have created this user abc here directly and in ldap also this abc user would have created directly in all this application by the admin guy so this user is created abc and he is performing his task let's say the user right got married and this user surname got changed so now she will have like you know different surname okay and she will inform the sap hr system boss i want to change my surname so what will happen save in this sap guy will update their surname here okay some to some else new value and they will also inform right to this target application guy they will also update it here okay now as we have our save and is in picture what will happen if this abc person first name it getting changed right or last name is getting changed through this user import her abc last name will update here okay last name will have new value okay and as we have integrated this abc this ostrich database also we should expect the last time also should flow here okay and that is called a update user task or update task okay update account task so this update account task also should get updated here okay and that is called a like you know update user or update account task create account task right modify and revoke account task if suppose abc leave the company user right so what should happen so save sap system should mark it as a terminated right and immediately when the user import job will run the user abc it will get terminated here immediately and after that this abc termination info also should to travel to this application and they should also get terminated here at here okay now you got it manoj yes manoj okay so that is the whole scenario right how the savient is working so now as i said right here if you 
imagine this is your ostrich database you have created this ostrich abc user right so you created this account in abc here or the user because this was a called user once it bring back your uh, this user information it is called account account alone cannot perform anything so account will give a access or a key to open this door right you are entering here but what action you should perform that should be you know you should give an entitlement right that entitlement it is called like you know you have different department here like right? hr and your in you know, manager what operation you are performing here you should have a entitlement so if you assume in the real time if this is your home right you have separate separate room here and all are locked okay or are locked if you and want to enter this house first you have to open the door and this opening door it is nothing world called it is a account and if you need access to any of this room you should have a different key for each room right this key will have a different you know this key will be different and this key will be different and this key nothing but it is called as a entitlement for you so if you carry a account and entitlement then only you can access the room so your purpose is to access this room so to access this room first you should open a door to this house right then only you will get access to this one so same way here your purpose is to get access as a hr person but this hr person access it is residing us in your ostrich database so first access this hr person entitlement you should get access to this ostrich application this ostrich application access mean your account should get created first here then only you will get this access so you will need two information first right account plus access right then you will be completely you will get access to this application so we inserted a record here in our database for entitlement import right this description i am going to mention here this access is given to perform floor hr task okay i inserted a record so same way i'll be inserting another record so i first mention my database sorry my application name then mention the endpoint name and what is the entitlement type we had another entitlement type floor manager right or manager it is okay so entitlement is a manager entitlement value it should be uh, i'll like you know uh, project manager i'll say okay and this has a different entitlement id 7998 okay and same glossary value we have to give and i'll mention here this access is given to manage access now team okay i created two entitlement here let's update it so we got an error right inserting into this access is okay insert into what is the error identity and okay i didn't give auto increment ip okay that is why it is throwing in credit identity import right so i should go to here this should be auto increment right okay now if you select the value i think still it will throw error or it happen okay one to automatically happen okay now this data is set let's me let just you know face the value okay these are the value so our entitlement import has to record now let's import this record to our 
right to our savings so that we can manage this entitlement so come back here right now go to the art capsules so we have to prepare our right entitlement value import json and we have to paste it here so this is your entitlement value json we have prepared right application name endpoint name entitlement entitlement value entitlement glossary and description we have given so from which table this information are coming our table name is entitlement underscore import copy this table name and paste it here so select application name endpoint name entitlement type entitlement value entitlement id okay so here there is a break glossary so we don't have data owner okay i'll remove this socks critical is not there okay this value is not there okay because so we don't have and description we have right from entitlement import so copy this information right so before mapper and data so same it is in the right okay copy this entitlement input value I close it now entitlement import is done let's run the job for this okay go to job control panel refresh this database okay or refresh this url one more time and go to your job control panel same as right and click your database and here you have entire import from database click on this okay we don't have any job okay so add a new job i'll give ENT underscore import submit it click here click the action start it and what was your connection name database connection cf okay okay before submitting that let me open the log as well so this is your application log keep it ready and run the job okay didn't run any job if you go down let's see what happened it got failed okay we ran it it failed This link table JDBC app underscore users doesn't exit. <laughs> Why it is referring the JDBC app dot user? Mm. I'm giving the connection. Did I save the connection? it is saved okay and it should be update so as for the document if you want to open the full configuring access report okay let's see where they are giving the value so these are the already done right and and uh, we should give it under entitlement import only entitlement value import permit to map up to for the target AJ2 for the importing access directly under okay directly also we can give it but we are you know leveraging from the ui itself and okay
from entire MySQL import, right? And it is created under for JDPC app. Okay. Let me submit the job again. Okay, it is taking some default value, I believe. I think you are using different connections, Manoj. There you imported in database connection one to three. Here you are running in database connection. Two. Oh, <laughs> okay. It was already open. So again, I am doing a mistake. Yeah, correct. So you cast the point. Correct. That's good. So we are leveraging here actually, right? <laughs> database training CF. Yeah. And again, I believe same thing happened that is right. You have to go to the connection again back, open our that is, I believe, your connection only, right? Yeah. Let me put it here. The entire value input and uh, save it. Okay. Let me just verify the uh, security system also one more time. So this is your security system, right? And uh, add access workflow is there. What of this connection is there? Provisioning connection. Okay. I think it should give a fine result now. Let's do an X and start. Database connection, database training here. Submit it now. Okay. So let this wrap run and we'll see. Okay, currently no division. Let me grab the log. Okay. And scroll down. Okay. Go to the bottom part. Okay. Now here you saw quads underscore scheduler worker six. So scroll down where it started. Okay. Entitlement value input job start. Okay. Get an entitlement input value connection name it is given. Okay, it's selling the connection is created. And what file it is selected, okay. And if you scroll down, it is link entire values inserted or updated to. Okay. That means it got succeed. If you go back to our endpoint, right? Just refresh this URL and go to your entitlement type okay first you should see in the entitlement let's go here you see two entitlement came here right one is floor manager one is project manager okay and this floor manager it was created under which entitlement type hr right and manager so if you go to entitlement type open this entitlement type hr and it has an entitlement floor HR. Same like if you open manager, you have access to project manager. Okay. This is like we bring back the information from a different database, right? To manage this application to this entitlement. Now we should give this entitlement, right? This entitlement should be given to employees so that they can access. So if you go by open this entitlement, after opening this entitlement, click on account, it will be zero. Okay. There is no entitlement given access. Okay. So how we did like create of account here, right? Create account JSON we wrote, right? Create account so that, you know, the account was created in a target database, right? The same way also we should provide to new user to this access. Okay. So as we discuss, we have right in our target database right we had two entitlement type one was hr one was manager this is entitlement type or groups you can say under that how many entitlement we had two right and here also we had two so one hour like you know floor hr and here manager we have floor manager so these two entitlement floor manager HR and all this information we took into our savient. Right, right. Now in savient, 
we have an application called is database training training cf this database training cf application right it has two entitlement one is floor HR. another one is manager okay if any new user that is coming let's say today one more user got hired like you know the hr team they onboarded the user this name user let's say it is kevin the new user came right if this new user we want to right as the user got onboarded through the user import right through the user import the user will get onboarded to sabient in sabient this kevin user got onboarded and this kevin user if you want to give access to database training cf first we should see choose right the application name that is database training after that in the next step it will ask what access you want to give to this user if i'll say floor hr right this floor hr access will have the user in the target system and the user will be getting onboarded through this application right now as this is database you can also check in your you know saving table information but you can view this information in an exact way or in your target application you can be it properly when we'll integrate the active directory okay that time actual information will be seeing right how you can you know view the information but from saving side and also we can utilize it and it will show you so we bring the user information or oh, sorry or uh, that entitlement information to the savient from the target application so now we have two entitlement right one is floor hr and one is project manager so if i want to give access to any of the user let's say there is a user go to ars right request access for other and i want to choose a user let's say this user right click on the next i'll give the application name database training cf if i add it right check out see now in the access part it is asking me to choose the entitlement okay so it is telling available hr and available manager no data available no data available so it's telling there is no entitlement available or this entitlement are not visible yet actually to get the access so let's go back to here go to the entitlement type right so i believe the request option is default by default table it is there it should come but why it is not coming let me refresh it Um, I believe some issue in the version itself. Drop down or I think like you know table. Let me open this config for requestable, right? I love AB that custom property one equal to let me step custom property and request let me require a key is table okay and this is for your hr if i go back right let me go back the end point this in chat we don't the right reboot custom the one request and update it press it okay the entitlement are not visible here actually 
let me go to ARS. Search me for any different application which are already there. If I go active directory, modify account, check out. Okay, these entitlement are visible, but our application entitlement are not visible. Why it is not visible? Open this one. I think it is asking for an entitlement approval workflow. And that is why it is showing. Let me go to the endpoint and check here. We got hanged or what? Okay. This entitlement type groups, if I open it, let me edit this group. Okay, hard workflow is there. That's why, you know, it is not showing for us. Let me go back to our application. In database. So no, I'll come to that part, okay? Now I'll explain it. Entitlement type, we can go to HCR. This will be auto approval. I'm just giving it, okay? And this is for HR, okay? Let me request home, request access for other, choose any user. Next, open our application, add it, go to checkout. Uh, still it is not visible this entitlement are requestable right if I go back Let me open the entitlement for one more tab. Go to entitlement tab, okay. Open this entitlement. Okay, these status are not reflecting, that is why. So the status is unknown because we didn't pass the status column. Click as active now. Make it active, okay. Now, if I go back, refresh it. Let's see. Okay, <laughs> now it is coming right. So, there is like you have to add one more column here, right? Status column, otherwise, it won't reflect there. Actually, it asking to add one more column. So you can add a column here. Okay. What is the status column? Okay, I'll come, I'll add it later. Okay, for you. Let me go ahead and do a request so that, or let me do it now only. Entitlement import, okay, edit it. And one more column, add it, status, apply it, finish, and element for select it. So the status should be one, one, okay, and apply it, finish. So if you want to add a new, right? Let me add a new record here. And this entitlement type, again, I will give HR, okay? And what is the HR value? Let's say this will be people HR, okay? People HR and the entitlement ID. I give a different ID. 
and this should be triple HR. The same glossary value I am giving here, okay? And giving some description. Apply it, okay? So now, if you view the entire event, right? So this entire event glossary, right? What you see here, glossary, okay? It is just the same name actually. Entire event glossary, entire value will be same name. So now I have added one more entire event, right? And I have given the value status equal to one. So apply and update it, okay? Finish it. So let me run the job quickly entire and import click on action and start and in the connection choose database training safe and submit it so let the job finish see what we saw here earlier right the entitlement what we bring the status was not reflecting correctly that why that is why it was not requestable you cannot request an inactive entitlement which is not active okay so the job has finished if i come back here refresh the url right under which we added hr okay go to entitlement type in hr now you see two entitlement right open the people hr and i think again the status is not reflecting Let me put a query. Say like. In XML, you didn't mention about status. I think. Sorry. In XML file, you didn't mention about status column. Oh, 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 okay. That is a silly mistake. Yeah. I have to pass here in XML actually. Yeah. The mapping column is not there actually. So this should be mapped to right. Entitlement values dot status. Okay. And here I should pass the source property status column. Okay. And save it. Provide this value in your import mapping. And this is I your. I mention it in second row also. Yeah, you should you should pass also in the yeah correct in the SQL query also you should pass. So after the state no, no status we have already passing I oh no, no that is a different mm -hmm. one. Yeah. Yeah. Here we should pass the status color margin. So copy this again. Status from okay and status okay. Now go back to your connection and. Update it. Okay. So now it is updated. Okay. Let me just run the job. Action and start it. Database training. Save. The connection was database safe only, right? Status okay, and the mapping shows for this status only. And let me check what column we have taken here, right? Status, but what is the Correct target database, like you know, CV and entitlement value. We have to check. Keep it description. CV and dot right entitlement values. Run this and see what is the status column name here. Okay, status only. Fine. 
come back to the job. Run one more time. Okay, it is not running. Let me see what is happening here. Oh, it's telling success within a second. Click on it. Okay, so you updated the record actually. Okay. Now, if I go back, let me refresh this. Okay, the status is coming active now, okay? So now we are good. So if I go back to request this application again, right? Request access for other. And now choose a new user. Click on next. Choose our application, the device training CF. In cart, check it out. Select the access now, right? I need the access, okay. So we got floor HR and people project manager. So people manager didn't came, right? We'll see that why it didn't came. So now simple, add this access to you, right? So you have this access. Now click on next. And here, give some description, right? Certain description and submit the request. Open view status. Okay, if we come back, we have an auto approve task. And there is a two tasks. First, it will create a new account and it will give you access to the floor manager. Okay. So if you look back in the top, it is telling new account request. And what is the access it is giving? Floor HR. If you hover it right, you see the description it is given here. This access is to give and perform floor HR task. Okay. Now this is the auto approve, right? If you go back. If you come back to the task menu, click here, you see two tasks will be first is a new account, another one will be add access. Okay. So let let it process. Okay. And how are you going to process? Come back to job control panel. Go back to job control panel, click on utility, come down, click on the provisioning job, action, and click on start. Here, give the your connection endpoint name, right? This is your security system name, sorry. Database training CF, so more. New uh, task type, first it should process the new account. Then it should go to add access, okay? Give it and submit it. So let's wait what will happen. Click job finish and we'll see what is happening. Okay, let me grab the log. Okay. And if you come back here, just refresh this tab. So go to the task. So still these are the new, right? It didn't process it actually. Why it didn't process? Let me go to the pending task. Refresh it. These are the two tasks, right? If you scroll down, it got an error. What error we're getting? Okay, this user already present actually duplicate and pre 16 for primary key. Okay. I think we should choose a new user who doesn't have access actually. So if you're provisioning the user, where this user is going, coming, right? So the table we are if you're prov provisioning, it's trying to, and this is import, right? Use user import account, create account, insert it to db underscore account. So this db underscore account have this record actually. That's why it is filling the 16, right? This already is already present. 
let me choose an other user. Okay, let's take this user only. Go to ARS, request access for the 256 range. Choose this user. Click on next. Type our security system or endpoint name. In cart, check it out. And add this entitlement. Click on next. Give a justification. Submit it. Okay, either you can copy this username or you can view the status, right? Or come back to the pending task and search it here. Okay. So you saw this two class dot created one is new account, another is add access. So let's just run the job again, right? Go to utility. Provisioning, click on action, start. Give the system name and new account, then add access. Submit it. So ideally, it should fail for your add access task. Okay, it should process create account task only. Let's see how it is happening. Whether it is auto completing or it is failing. Let's see. Okay, now grab the log. Come back to the pending task. Click on refresh. Okay. See, both the thing got completed but i believe right only one got created so how you can search a complete task right go to complete task i don't have the user i didn't remember it now go to security system choose your security system and search it so these are the account completed right so for today date these are the two tasks right so this task what is the uh, username 2566 copy this username go to admin in the user tab open the user oh, um, i think this one go to account database training got provisioned okay right open this and you see the associated entitlement but it is an auto complete task okay because why this is auto complete task because we have not mentioned any connection or any information for our access where it should create actually right so that information it is not there so simply if you go to dv access right you see this record got inserted but what is the relation where it should in insert the this add access task. So if you go to your connection part, right? Scroll down, okay. Scroll above, sorry. Let's see. You have a grant access JSON, right? See this grant access JSON, it is empty actually, totally for us. So the task which we got trigger for, you know, add access, that was a dummy task. So it simply copy the task actually, it didn't do anything. Okay, we'll mention like, you know, we'll leverage another table here for a grant, grant access. How it is written like, you know, we'll be inserting another record to a new table. So this grant access JSON, if you copy, right, go to the document and search it for grant access. So granting access to an account. So we should follow this information, okay? What they're asking. So this is for a call procedure actually. They're using a call procedure, okay? But we should leverage it using a table, okay?
So we'll look into that, right? How we're gonna, you know, proceed for a grant access JSON. That also we'll see. Now coming back to your things. So we completed the granting access to the user. And we saw one more entitlement, right? It was showing us only for two entitlement in the request. So what about the other one? Let's see again, if I'm choosing the user and opening this database, click add, check out. So we saw two entitlement, right? We, but we had three entitlement. If you go to entitlement import, okay. HR, we have two people HR, okay. That is so available manager, available HR. So HR, we have only one displaying here. What about the other one? Let me go to the HR, okay. What happened? Let's see. So go to your security system. Go to your security system. Go to endpoint. Open the database training and go to entitlement type. So this HR, right? has two we are able to see floor manager right floor hr not the other one people hr right why it is not visible so if you click this icon right there is a small search icon click here i have given a requestable statement what i have written here okay the entitlement whose custom property one is requestable that will only visible in the request part okay config for requestable entitlement in ARS. So whose entitlement value will be requestable in custom property one, they will be visible, right? If you go back again, go to your endpoint, open the endpoint, right? Go to entitlement type, again, open the HR and open the floor HR and open the people HR. So this floor HR, if you go to other attribute, I have mentioned requestable in custom property one. That is why it is visible. But in people HR, if I go to other attribute, there is no value, right? That means I'm telling this people HR shouldn't be visible to anybody. If you want visible, simple type requestable here and update it. Okay. Now if you go back here, refresh it. Okay you see to entitlement coming. So basically, we are stopping the user to request everything. So sometime there will be request based on users some custom property or something like you have to stop the user so that everybody shouldn't be able to request it, right? In an organization, if you are working as an employee of a company, you should not have access to any HR information, right? or you cannot see them at all. That is how you can also stop it, okay? If you go back to the security system itself or the entitlement type itself, click on again here, right? So you can stop it, right? You can mention any value over here or whose custom property value is that you can access it, stop it. Even you can stop this whole application and the endpoint level also. Okay. So in endpoint level also, you have the option, you can stop anybody to access this. See this access query, right? So this whole application will not be visible here. How you can achieve that? If I go back, let me open any user. Okay. Go to user. I'll be mentioning, I'll be mentioning this last name or let me open any of the user, update their city to Bangalore, I will give, okay, for one user. So let me like open another user. The six five seven eight okay, and I'll give city here. Let's say I'll give Kolkata. And let me open another user. Here I'll give city as
bang okay and simple update it so we have four user right out of them two user have city as bangalore and two user have city as kolkata so i want the application this applicant should be requestable only okay when the user city is like bangalore so how you can achieve that again go back to the security system right go to your open the security system go back to the endpoint open the endpoint okay here in the access query you have to write it here right so same way where it is written it you should write where user dot first name equal to this okay i should write where users dot ct okay equal to i think they are using any uh, okay single code they are putting it okay you can mention bangalore okay if you have any error it will not let you submit okay okay there is no error so it's submitted okay now <laughs> if i want to user dot first name manoj maybe we have to mention city right i mentioned city right here first name i think it got changed okay while i do a copy paste okay so user dot city okay this is fine you so this users it is a object of your user uh, you know table and city is the city column so now if you update it okay i think uh, copy pasting while doing that that might a problem there now it is updated right okay so now if you go back and do a request phrase request right let me go to this menu go to home page request access for other i will first choose any any of the user and you see you don't see our application itself right it is not visible for you so same way if i go to this user right which city is bangalore right this user copy this user and request access for the search it okay and submit this user okay you see this application now right it is visible for you to request okay if i give another user whose city is kolkata right if you copy this user go back to again request home request access for other and give a statement like this submit the request for this user see our database cf is not visible okay so this is how also you can stop the user from being request so we are leveraging ct but in the actual scenario how they will reverse okay for a employee normal employee your job code will be different for a hr your job code will be different so in the real time you have to stop the user based on the job code description this is job code description for it will be some 1004 and for hr it will be different one so that is how you know you should stop them for being request right if if you able to request the application and by mistake your manager approve it that make a biggest problem right it's a huge loss to the company and it's a against a hr policy or a socks compliance policy that is why we have the access query in the place you can utilize that okay and you can also leverage the query to submit it for you know multiple city like you can write type the condition users dot city equal to like kolkata or user dot city like that so you can place two condition over there also okay so this is how you should stop the user from being able to request right and coming back to that we'll also see how we can automate the provisioning process so that means if i upload some user or any new user gets hired i shouldn't make them access this application it's are always right it should be auto access it should give that is called birthright access so in the next class we'll leverage okay this kevin user when they are getting onboarded to savient they should get automatic access to this application okay and after that i will you know 
uh, I'll show you instead of uh, Active Directory, let's open the REST based application first. Okay, so that at least you should have some new idea because you know, I, if I give a gap between your application, you will forget again actually what this concept. So I'm just planning in the next to next class, we'll integrate a service now application that is a REST based. Okay. And this REST based application, it is much more important for every application or for Savient. That is little complex, but I believe, you know, you will enjoy the application. There's a lot of good thing is there, you know, we can leverage it to understand it. Okay. And I will leverage in the next class, how you gonna implement the technical rule, right? And user update rule. So this technical rule, it will help you to automate this process, birth uh, in the provisioning process. And with that, we'll look how this user update rule also work. Because in the real time, you will be dealing with a lot of user update rule every day. Every day you have to use at least, you know, 15 to 20 times for this user update rule. Okay. This is most important thing. Hmm. Any question here? Sriti, uh, Tejas, any, any question here? Uh, today's topic is little confusing, Mama. Uh, this topic in the sense you're talking about uh, uh, entitlement access. Yes. So what is making you confused or you were not able to understand what is the entitlement? No, in lab session, uh, you are giving access, right? Yes. So from that point, it's pretty confusing. You are going little fast at that point. Okay, you want me to go slow by slow showing you how we can give the yeah. uh, entitlement access, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so then that is fine. So that is why I told you, right? You can stop me any moment if you feel I'm little first, okay? That's not a problem. Let me show you again how we can, you know, do the lab access for the entitlement import. So as we discuss here, we should have a entitlement. So in your target application, we have two entitlement, right? Two entitlement type basically. One is your HR, one is your manager. So under HR, we have two entitlement. One is floor HR, one is triple HR. And in manager, we have one entitlement only that is floor manager okay so all this entitlement it is residing for us in a another table that table we have we called it as entitlement underscore import okay so this table contain your all the three entitlement so now what we'll do we'll again add some more entitlement and we'll see how this entitlement are getting onboarded to you save it so here we are doing target reconciliation right exactly that is a target reconciliation so earlier we did target reconciliation for account now we are doing a target reconciliation for your access or for entitlement okay so target entitlement, target reconciliation involved your account plus entitlement. As we discussed, account only it will give you access to your application. That means you are authorized to access the application. But once you access to application, what performance you want to do, what operation you want to do, that will be decided by your entitlement, right? So if you remember in your corporate or your normal life, if you log in to your uh, SBI application, let's say, right? If somebody has a State Bank of India application, if you log into that, there will be two options you see, right? One is your for like corporate login, one will be for normal login. So we always choose for the normal login, right? 
once you do the normal login right inside that you see you have option to transfer money and you have option to add beneficiary if you remember while you open a new sbi account for some initial days you can do the transfer of money only you cannot add any beneficiary for at least for 24 hours why because you have not given any specialized access immediately it will added you after some time for initial day i don't know what is the scenario now but when i opened the account before 10 years back it was a moment for me i was able to transfer money itself i was not able to add a new beneficiary because it required a new another profile password okay so that means you have two privilege here one privilege to for sending the money another privilege for adding a beneficiary so you have to assume like you know if you are able to transfer the money that means your account has a entitlement to do it but not to do this one that is why you record another entitlement to add a beneficiary okay the same way we are leveraging here right if you want to perform any action we should have a entitlement first so i am going to add a so you know right or like we have already created a table where we are posting our all the entitlement value so this entitlement i'll be adding a new entitlement let's say i am adding a entitlement here i am giving the application name i am giving the entitlement name what is the entitlement type this entitlement type we discussed is nothing a group right so i am giving a group as manager so again what is the subgroup we should have a floor manager okay or if you go for a company they should have something like you know admin manager who is to manage the cafeteria so those information you can give okay i am giving a id that is a unique character for this particular you know manager right so let's say seven eight nine nine and what is the glossary or the you know other name for this i'll give the same with ledger and i'll type a comment here this access is given to floor manager only and i'll give the status search one apply it okay now we have the entitlement ready okay so once your entitlement is ready we need to bring those entitlement to our savient right so we created a new entitlement here one more and this entitlement we are now bringing from your target application to your savient okay how we are gonna bring the same concept we have our hr application we have our savient right in between we are preparing a connection okay and in the connection we have a part here called entitlement value import basically this entitlement value import right it will have a json format where we will be mentioning from which section of the information we are bringing back or bringing and to posting it to savient so those information will be mentioning here so if you go back to your connection right in the connection scroll down or you can click on the admin menu click on this three dot go to identity repository go to your connection in the connection open your connection so our connection name is database training here open it and as we discuss we will be passing for 
entitlement import in entitlement value import okay for that we are preparing a json and where we can find the json if you go to your document right you have to open the document and type entitlement entitlement value import okay and you have to scroll down okay here for the full import you have the mapping column here whatever mapping column is required right so again it has given the same format right what format it has given in the right side source property you have to mention where you are getting the data so i am getting the data from the entitlement import table okay and what is our column name application name endpoint name entitlement type entitlement value entitlement id glossary description and status okay so these information we are mentioning in the source property account name source property security system we are mentioning here in the source property and what is your save in property like because we are bringing back the information to save end so we should mention also the save end property so what is the save in property name it is telling name but where is this name is coming from account underscore name account dot name so that means if you want to uh, bring entitlement you should also mention the okay uh, i am looking at the account import okay you should look in the entitlement sorry yeah so this is your source property right the source property all your source table information it is mentioned like your application name endpoint entitlement type entitlement type entitlement id glossary description and status so these information right these all your column name we are mentioning our target table where this data are coming here okay all this column name are mentioned and where this value should go this value should be sent to savient table or savient our savient cell so that is why i am telling what is the application name we are integrating our application name is database training cf okay and that is it will get hold by your security system name okay and it is sending to your security system table directly because you know this system name it it is coming from your security system so the security system we have the table we discuss right the security system table it will hold all your security system name if you go back to your security system table i if i show you security system select it you will see all your security system will be mentioned okay so this is like you know system key okay and if you go right okay see all your display name here jdbc active directory amigo pod okay jdbc app okay so what is your security system we created database training cf right you see this database training cf okay so it is matching the security system name against your security system table and the same way right it is matching your endpoint name so, so endpoint is coming from a endpoint table okay we have a different table for the end to end point if you scroll down so you scroll above in your sapient database you have the endpoint here endpoint select the endpoint table okay and this is your endpoint key if you go a little forward you can see your endpoint name also will be mentioning here okay so you see the endpoint name here right display name so here you have your database database training cf okay so 
to this database training shape, we saw the endpoint name, right? The same way they are passing the entitlement value also, right? It is coming from entitlement type and this value like entitlement value, entitlement ID, these all should go to your entitlement values table. Okay. So after preparing your this XML file, what you can do, you can put it under your entitlement value import, right? Once you paste the value here, right? Just click the save and test connection. And once your connection is successful, right? We have to do a, you know, run the job. So the job, as we discussed, right? It will bring all your endpoint or entitlement details from here to here. So you have seen, right? For user import also, you are leveraging a different job, right? For your provisioning also, you are leveraging a different job. Also for your account target reconciliation also, you are leveraging a different job. The same way, we are leveraging another job that is, you know, for your So this job is there, right? So if you scroll down, uh, go to your utility. Okay, here you see, uh, where it went? I think database, okay, go to the database and entitlement import from database, okay? This job you see, just run the job, okay? So once you run the job again to bring back your right to bring back your entitlement also you have to mention your connection information. So simple mention database training CF and submit it. Okay. So once you submit it let me see what happened. Go back. Okay. So this is your last run right 949. Open it. So it's still okay. Total entitlement updated four. How much we have in the entitlement table? One, two, three, four. So let me see. Go to your endpoint or security system. Open your security system. Go to endpoint. Open the endpoint. Go to the entitlement type. Okay. So last we added for manager. Okay. For this manager. Open the manager. And we got what? Floor manager. Okay. This floor manager came here. Open this floor manager. Right. And you see the status is active. Okay. Now if you want to request for this floor manager entitlement okay you have to just go ahead and submit the request because for floor manager that is coming from the manager group we do not have any access query or configure requestable if it is there then you have to mention like this see this is empty for us okay so that all the entitlement will be accessible so you can simply come back here request home request access for the and choose any of the user okay click on next and okay so i think the same table we are leveraging so that uh, this user already have access to this one so it will throw an error for us we have to choose it another user let me give as a hundred and scroll down choose a, another user and click on next and here search our application okay so our application is not visible now right can you tell me why it is not visible any idea why your application is not visible because we explicitly mention which city is bangalore those user only can view our application right 
So if you want to access any of the, let me pick an active user, okay. Open this user and update the city to Bangalore, okay. Then only you can access the application. So simple update it, copy the user, request, request access for other now, open the user, this user right, go to next. Now I think you can see your application, okay. Add to cart, okay, and after that, click on checkout. Now you see all the entitlement, so simple, you have to choose your entitlement add it and this entitlement so you can add it okay two entitlement i added click on next okay write some comments here okay and here also some comments and submit it now how many requests will be generated three requests will be totally generated okay one is for your new account copy this username go to task pending task search the user okay total three tasks one is for new account and another is for add access okay this add access it is getting auto completed because we do not have any grant access json so once we wrote it okay it should go to a proper table information okay because each user has access to what request that also should get captured okay and it should be stored in a different table so now if you try to perform this action right let me go to the job control panel open the job control panel go to utility simple click on the provisioning job click on action and start so submit it Too much noise. So the job is finished. Let me copy the user first. Okay. What is the username? And refresh this URL. Okay. You see all are completed now. But your user is auto completed. Okay. Not it is actual completing. If you go to account, right, this account got created, okay, and you open this account, whatever entitlement we process it now, okay, so you can find it under your associated entitlement, okay, you see this one, even you can read, view it in the entitlement hierarchy, click here, see, in the hierarchy, you can also see, see, here it is giving you only the entitlement information for you, and it is giving entitlement type here, but in the hierarchy, you can view in a proper format. See, so manager has the floor manager and HR has the floor HR. Okay, so this is your access. Okay, 